And there's another one that has unfolded overnight. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the uh, we discussed this quite a lot yesterday, actually. The idea that the Office of Budgetary Responsibility had moved from irrelevant and not worth consulting to relevant and worth consulting, but not publishing their findings until towards the end of next month to relevant and worth consulting. And we will actually be publishing their findings uh, much sooner than scheduled because otherwise the markets are going to continue to be spooked. <sighs> and then you've got Penny Mordaunt, who seems to be quite an interesting politician. I'm not sure I was aware of her before the leadership campaign began to unfold. I knew her name. and, and, and Did she do a reality show involving diving, off, of, like swimming pool diving? They don't call it swimming pool diving, do they? There's only really one kind of diving, at least one kind of diving you can talk about on a family programme. Splash, it was called, wasn't it? Yes. Um... So that was all I really knew about her. I think she might have been in the Royal Navy and she did a speech once where she smuggled in words as a sort of bet. She, she was going to get lots of, n- not, not quite naughty words, but slightly inappropriate words into a parliamentary speech as a sort of... So she seems like quite a game girl. We'll be talking about casual sexism later in the programme, by the way, in, in case you were wondering. Um, so I wasn't like fully uh, aware of her before now. Um, I think that was just her texting me there. Did anyone hear that ping? She's quite upset with me for not not being previously aware of her high-profile political career. But she's already swung at trust on this benefits thing. I'd be very surprised if there isn't a climb down on this. The problem is it wouldn't... Well, not the problem, but the point is that it wouldn't actually be a U-turn. Um... Let me tell you what I think is happening. And as you'll know, if you're a regular listener to this programme, I haven't been wrong about any of this stuff since 2016, but I'm bound to be wrong soon. So, you know, pull up a seat and enjoy the moment when it actually occurs. The intention is clearly, the intention is clearly not to raise benefits in line with inflation, which was a manifesto pledge in 2019 in that that mythical defeat, that victory of of just three years ago when Boris Johnson secured an 80-seat majority. He did so on a manifesto pledge to not let benefits fall behind inflation. In other words, the people with the lowest incomes in the entire country will not be rendered even worse off than they are already. That, That was essentially the pledge. And I'm pretty clear, and I think you are as well, that Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng intended to abandon, uh, possibly still intend to abandon that pledge. They have a £43 billion hole. And and the best thing that they need to fill, they need to explain where these tax cuts are going to come from. Uh, Two days ago, it was a £45 billion hole, but they've now stopped plans to give people like me £2 billion back in in tax cuts. They've still got £43 billion worth of tax cuts on current expenditure that they need to find. Where do you think they're going to go for it? They've already rejected windfall taxes on big companies. They've already um, uh, reversed, U-turned on tax cuts for the wealthiest people in the country. If, if, if you look at someone who was giving tax cuts, to the wanted to give tax cuts to the wealthiest people in the country, how do you think they're going to feel about the poorest people in the country? Yeah, exactly. So I would give you, I give you any odds you wanted that they were intending and possibly still are. So this refusal to commit, and I'll play you her talking to Nick in a moment on this very specific issue, her refusal to commit to this policy, to, to, to pledge that they won't be doing it means that they are intending to do it. They're just reading, they're just waiting, they're just hoping that by the time the end of November comes around, is it November the 23rd that this speech that, that Kwarteng is going to do this statement, that by then they will be able to get away with the idea of abandoning that man- manifesto pledge and crucially, I think, rendering the poorest people in the country even poorer than they are already. I think they would do it in a heartbeat if they thought they could get away with it. I think that the long shadow of this 45p tax cut is going to stalk and haunt them for their entire regime because they will always be the people that looked at a cost of living crisis, that looked at an energy bills catastrophe, that looked at a country in serious economic peril and thought, I know what we'll do. Let's give the richest people more money than they currently have. So the idea that they would balk at taking money away or rendering poorer the poorest people in society is absolutely, absolutely credible and comprehensible. 